Good evening. I would like to welcome the authors of this uh, show, Nikolai Halezin and Natalia Kaliada. We saw a very strong play that is based on a documentary story, on a story based on reality. And therefore, I would like to ask uh, my first question in connection with uh, how you grasped the story, how did you work with the material at hand, and how did you develop it into a theater play? Uh, uh, the protagonist, uh, Ms. Krasovska, is uh, godmother of uh, our young daughter. She is our friend, and uh, the <coughs> material has been derived from interviews given over a period of nine years. For nine years, uh, we were coming back to our uh, uh, conversations with Irina. And uh, moreover, in uh, my, so to say, previous life, I was a journalist while Natasha was active um, in uh, social work. So we examined the entire story, the entire case, and uh, we ultimately came to the understanding that uh, it must be turned into a theatrical play, not about power, not about about how power kills, murders. It should be a piece of theater about uh, a love story between a woman and a man about these two people who were striving for a beautiful life together, but at a certain moment an external force interfered with this uh, desire and uh, destroyed uh, everything, disturbed everything. So uh, this is a story about how to cope and how to come to grips with the past and with the criminal power in the past which does not, this criminal power does not give any thought to what's going on within a family. They do not care about uh, this. So this was a very demanding work. Um, prior to staging a play, you need uh, three to four weeks to complete everything. But uh, before uh, we got to that stage, uh, we uh, had to go through very difficult um, um, periods of uh, hard work. But I believe that we have been successful in uh, describing the story of uh, Irina's life. Uh, okay, so you said that you collected materials over a, a very long time. Uh, this uh, play premiered uh, six uh, years ago, that is in 2008, if I'm not mistaken. What happened in the meantime uh, with the story of Irina or other people who uh, had had suffered a similar fate, and what uh, impact did uh, the play have? You uh, premiered it underground in Belarus. Uh, what was the impact of the play, and what followed after you first uh, staged it? Uh, this piece of theater had three fates. One fate is beautiful because it traveled all over the world. It uh, was produced in a number of countries. Uh, it was reported about in the media. So this is a beautiful story. The second story is less beautiful and more problematic, especially when uh, it is uh, staged in Minsk. It is always underground. We cannot even hire a hall. We have to produce it in 
flats, in clubs, in uh, cellars, uh, in basements, uh, wherever possible. Uh, the audience uh, consists mostly of young people who cry, who discuss it, etc. This is a less uh, beautiful side of uh, this uh, play, but it is uh, filled with more content. It is filled with uh, uh, emotions of um, viewers, of uh, spectators who look uh, at the stage and uh, think about what's going on in their country. And the third line are interactions uh, of uh, this play with uh, Irina. Irina had a chance to see the play and um, she saw this uh, piece, uh, but uh, when we repeated the performance, she was never able to re-watch it again. She uh, was never able to watch it when uh, we produced it in New York and in other places because it was so emotionally strong. Um, in the meantime, she got married uh, to an American American, and she uh, tried to come to terms with this story, but it is not possible. And uh, uh, the story and history uh, is uh, open. There is a number of witnesses. Uh, uh, there is a number of groups. Uh, we know exact uh, names of people who were involved in this uh, thing going on. And uh, all that we need is a change in the government. Uh, I openly admit that when uh, we watch this, play, I cannot help shedding a tear. This is uh, because uh, these people are next to us, like uh, daughter of uh, Lev, who is mentioned here. It is a wound that never heals. It is not possible to have a peaceful um, uh, attitude to this play, even though 15 years have gone by, the situation is now easier because this is about murder, about infamous murder, and those who are guilty of it uh, were never punished. They live their lives, they receive awards, Russian, um, Belarusian, they receive awards of the Russian Orthodox Church, and uh, this hurts. I have a question concerning the theater now. This decision you've taken concerning the shaping of the story of Irina and Anatoly, why have you decided that theater is the tool to tell the story, why was it theater? Why not something else, something different? And another question, which is linked with this. Uh, what is the number of this performance of the Belarus Free Theater? And what other things have you done? The, have this uh, play changed the manner in which you are presenting theater pieces, or uh, uh, did it influence the way you operate? I don't know the answer to the first question. You will answer. And the second question I can answer. I don't remember which 
is the number of tonight's performance. We started with the theatre uh, with a piece called 4-8, it was a psychosis, a piece of Sarah Kay, and it has nothing to do with the situation in Belarus, with the literature, political life of Belarus. It was a story of the development of a women uh, mentality, suicidal thoughts, uh, sexual minorities, etc. And from the very beginning, this piece has been forbidden, was forbidden. A director was a friend of us from the National Theatre, and he was forbidden to show it to stage it and then we met and we've agreed that it will be a first underground performance we visited 27 different locations in Minsk but they have they refused us everywhere because they said that that problems like suicide or sexual minorities is an issue which doesn't exist in Belarus and if the Belarus audience was to watch it, maybe they would suffer mentally. So that was a reason to refuse the staging. And it was similar to the situation in the Soviet Union, which would always claim there is no sex. And uh, it means that such problems are the problems of Brit Britain. It's not an issue for Belarus. And uh, Belarus is uh, in the first five countries in number of suicide. It ranks second in Europe in numbers of suicide. And uh, all gay parades are uh, this ended in 1520 minutes and people are abducted and uh, they are threatened to be beaten so that is a real situation and uh, when we started our work we made first a list of taboo issues in Belarus and so we had this list of all taboos in our country and for each main taboo issue we found five other branches five other linked issues and we have we have also agreed that each piece we are going to perform will be on one of these taboos like abductions of political prisoners etc because now it is a problem number one in our Belarus society and today we uh, hear that Belarus is not the last dictatorship in Europe anymore because we see what is happening in Russia. But we, on the on the contrary, say that uh, uh, Belarus is already Euro Asia, and today, on the 60th of November, this issue is very topical. On the 16th day of each month, we remember the date when Anatoly Krasovsky and Viktor Goncharov were abducted. And what we play today, it is really happened incidentally that we today have the same date when these people were kidnapped and murdered and we would like to speak not only about those two but also about those who are political prisoners next year we should have the so-called presidential elections and we have one of the presidential candidates of previous elections in prison so we will continue to use theater as a mechanism, it will be that place where we say what we think, when, when we want to, who we want, regardless of the consequences. 
we have to face. For instance, our actors are not allowed to fly directly. They must use different lines so that uh, uh, there is no suspicion that we are leaving the country, that the whole company is leaving the Trump, so the members of our company use different flights, for instance. You have a different story to tell? In reality, this is a justified question. The truth is that we are not doing political theater. I am sure that after Brecht died, there is nothing like a political theater anymore. Because people working in theater are not allowed to declare political thoughts. We make a topical theater. We only show what's happening around us. And if there is a story, we have to tell it. It's something like pregnancy. There is something getting life inside you. It may be a uh, article in newspapers or novel, and so there is this uh, beginning, this germ, and something begins to draw. And if you are not going to tell the story, you may go mad. We live in a country which is a dictatorship for more than 20 years by now. And in a dictatorship, uh, you have a high number of low, indecent things. And at the same time, you hear a lot of strong stories, stories of love, courage, uh, humane acts. And there is a lot of these positive things under dictatorship. And then you make your choice and you try to show what needs to be told. It's 20 years now. Many books have been written. Documentaries were made. But I think that the real story of Belarus haven't been told yet. Not, uh, nothing like the story of Czechoslovakia during the transition process or a story similar to the Polish story at the times of Solidarność. And there are many stories to be told. Take the elections of 2010, a young man gets imprisoned, he becomes a political prisoner, and uh, his girl is imprisoned in another prison, KGB prison, and they are in neighboring cells, and then they are brought before a court and they are not allowed to meet and this takes several years and finally they uh, meet they get married and immediately they have a child and you start to understand this road they had to walk to to meet as if they were two magnets which have to overcome resistance and then they meet and there are many such stories of people saving each other, helping to hide someone. To smuggle out of the country. This is a situation very similar to the situation of the Second World War, of the Second World War when people were hiding Jews. You would think that this can't happen anymore in Europe, but it's happening. And why theater? It is because we are theater people. We are a theater. And so the question is not why theater, but the question is why do we have to talk about it? After this play, we uh, prepared other plays. And Volodya Sherban, our partner who worked on other pieces, and I also made plays about the death penalty, and we played it all over the world. 
And the last piece is about ecology, but in fact it is about people who find themselves in extreme conditions uh, which are linked also to the environment. And now we work on another Belarus piece, a new story, because there is a new story which matured. It's a story of three young girls who were imprisoned by KGB during the presidential elections. And the third girl, a young activist, is active in uh, social life. The second girl is a journalist and the wife of the main opposition candidate for the presidential post. And the three women are in KGB prison and 90% of the prisoners and the guards are men. And these women uh, go through a hell. It's a nightmare. They are in cells without a toilet, and they can go to a toilet only twice a day, 6 o'clock in the morning, 6 in the evening. They eat, but nobody knows what it is. And the girls ask for cosmetics when they are in prison, and uh, uh, their parents and their husbands don't understand why they ask this. And then they say, after they got free, in the morning we had to wash, but we have to look nice, we have to be attractive when we are interviewed, and the interviewer, the investigator has to see them in the same shape as they were always. It's an incredible story. They uh, went through uh, incredible situations, but they wanted to look nice despite all that. And um, we were helping them to leave the country without uh, papers. Now uh, one of them is uh, the leader of uh, the largest uh, Belarusian site in Poland in exile. Um, we are again pregnant with this story of uh, three girls. And uh, it is also going to called the time of women. The story says that um, uh, Belarus today goes uh, through a period that may be called a uh, time of women, not the time of men. I believe that it's only women that can protect us from a war and from uh, this uh, <clears throat> crazy things that are uh, that we are heading towards. So this is a statement about the world in uh, Belarus, uh, and we feel an urgent need to spell it out. Uh, in your story. In your play, in addition to the story of uh, Irina, uh, there was also a mention of the story of uh, Popelushko, the priest uh, who was um, murdered at the beginning of the 80s. Was this story also important for Irina, or did it appear in uh, your play for some other reasons? Uh, I believe there was another reason. When uh, we were uh, dealing with the uh, forced uh, uh, disappearance of people in other countries, uh, it was quite clear that also in Poland, the Catholic Church played an important role in the defense of human rights. While the situation in Belarus is identical with that we experienced under the Soviet Union times, uh, the church is not uh, separated from the state. 
uh, like for example, uh, the church has a license to sell alcohol and uh, cigarettes. This is a great business for the church. I have in mind the Orthodox Church. Orthodox Church uh, awards uh, a prize uh, to the uh, uh, leader of the death squad uh, who uh, that um, abducted people. This is a prize for um, spiritual development. That's how it's called. It means that we also had um, a duty to address uh, moral uh, issues in society in order to enable the spectators to watch such games. And uh, perhaps uh, it will make people think about the role of certain institutions in our country that uh, currently play a passive role, sometimes even a negative role in our society. Like in every play of ours, we made an attempt at pushing certain layers, certain groups of society to perhaps uh, uh, behaving in a different manner. Uh, but we have not seen any results. I could speak about the activities of Protestant Church in Belarus, uh, which uh, makes certain efforts, but it is difficult to say the same about other structures. In fact, in our place, uh, we always proceed from the general to the specific or the other way around, from the specific to the general. When we speak about Irina and Anatoly and about all those uh, deceased persons, uh, we uh, are curious about how people in other countries reacted. This is a a special topic for a study, a study because it is an extremely interesting story. When we were play, preparing uh, the uh, play with Popolushka, we discussed the case of Ingrid de Betancourt, which uh, is uh, a lady who had been kidna kidnapped by uh, drug lords. Uh, in South America, and this is also a story relevant for our play. Um, two days prior to the first night, suddenly a miracle appeared and the Betancourt was released. This is why we uh, discarded this uh, part of our play, because uh, potential spectators uh, prayed uh, successfully to have uh, Betancourt released. Also, another victim that was murdered in Chechnya was added to the play because potential spectators could not pray for the release of this uh, particular person. Authoritarian regimes in um, uh, maybe also in uh, your part of the world uh, are saying that politics is a dirty matter that you should focus instead on uh, art, uh, on uh, beauty. And uh, ultimately, you will end up with uh, some bullshit because uh, we uh, uh, play harps uh, uh, and uh, remain clean and beautiful, but politics is left uh, to the politicians, and uh, which is because politics is a dirty game. And uh, if an economist or another person sees uh, 
that uh, uh, he is portrayed in a film as a bastard and he is ready to even kill the author. Um, and they are very much afraid of being portrayed in this uh, manner as they really are. So this uh, is uh, the area of art uh, which um, provokes intensive uh, social discussions. This is why we are not uh, proponents of this so-called clean art. Uh, we want uh, theater to be uh, the essence uh, or to reflect the essence of life. We are not uh, trying to give answers, uh, but the other way around, we are trying to ask uh, questions. Is there anybody from the audience who would like to ask a question? Mm -hmm. Uh, if there is uh, no microphone given to the speakers, we, uh, the interpreters cannot hear it. So the answer now. We have a permanent company, a large group of actors, and it's a, it's a burden for our actors because Sometimes, uh, when we had such a possibility of playing more frequently in Minsk, and our actors would play several pieces in one night, and it was always the same set of actors, and other actors don't really be so enthusiastic to join us because when they contact us and we explain to them you become a part of the free theatre company, the consequence is that you lose the possibility to study, to work. When you go to apply for work, you won't be given it. You may have home searches. You may be arrested. You will be put on a blacklist or imprisoned. And today we have a very good production manager, Suraga, and she is a great rock singer, and she was in prison, but she is still with us, and she organizes our activities in Belarus. And basically all members of our company were imprisoned, all still play, and we have also students of theater art, Nikolai Vladimir, Nikolai Vladimir and me lecture uh, to new student groups and it's a very interesting situation because when students come to us we always tell them that they are going to lose everything and that they will face problems, huge problems and usually after two years one or two are still with us from the original group we have taken on board. So we are not a small group anymore. We have some 30 people, including an international component, but we are a traveling theater company and we are considered to be a large one. But we say we are only 30 in all Europe who play underground under conditions of dictatorship and probably such a theater is necessary not only for us. When we visit a democratic country, then 
In our website, we had something saying that the free theater will continue to live only in times of dictatorship in Belarus. But when we traveled abroad, we have realized that a free theater must exist all the time, because sometimes we see that the problems of a democratic social order are more difficult than ours. Uh, a part of your company is underground, a part is in exile. How do you cope with this situation? We have four people in exile, Vladimir Sherbin is a person we worked together for 10 years, me and Oleg are the lead uh, and all the other members are from Belarus. We have two methods of work. We use Skype as a medium of communication for uh, preparing new pieces. And this new piece about the three women who were in the KGB prison will be also uh, broadcast and prepared via Skype. And then we have also residents in Cornwall in England where we come and there we stage our pieces. Doing it by Skype is quite difficult, maybe not so difficult, but it is all the time the same, a bit to the left, a bit more to the right, uh, with the camera and the screen is not big enough, or people don't hear, or and when people are not, uh, I don't know, satisfied, they say, I can't hear, I can't hear. And we would sometimes rent a house where we can have, we had it, uh, and some 60 people could come in, but we were taken it away. They have taken 60 uh, visitors to our pieces, and we will try to find new ways like online broadcasting of our performances. First time we uh, reached out to 25,000, the second time to 40,000 people. And this means that when the regime thinks that they damaged us by taking away the house for 60 uh, audience, uh, the consequence was that they damaged themselves more. I'm Haris Pašović, I'm a theater and film director from Sarajevo, Bosnia, and I'm artistic director of East West Center in Sarajevo. So I'm so happy I saw some of your pieces in New York several years ago, and I'm happy to see you again with your fantastic company. Uh, you are the brave ones, you know, as you know. You know that you are brave, but we know as well. And um, it's, it's uh, such a phenomenon, actually, that one artistic group, one theatre group, um, uh, keeps the focus on the country that has been uh, overlooked by everybody. You know, that if it's not for you, probably most of the world wouldn't even mention the word Belarus. Uh, and in, in spite of the fact that it is in Europe, um, it's the, 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 the black hole. And uh, it's very strange that, you know, Europe, as you know, it's so sensitive about democracies and to teach other people democracies. But when B Belarus comes uh, in, in, into question, then suddenly there is a big silence about it. So if you, uh, you show how the artists um, have to tell the truth. Uh, that's our duty. That's what we are paid for. That's, that's our, our, our call. 
and it is absolute phenomenon what you what what you do. Uh, it's also so ironic that uh, uh, Great Britain gave you the opportunity to work. The same Great Britain that uh, gave the same opportunity to Pinochet. So you know, but as, as long as as you can work there, I'm happy with that. You know, I can live with that. So thank you very much for what you do and keep doing that. And we are with you, even if you don't know that we are with you. Thank you. Thank you. Очень жаль, но это правда. What is really good is that the Pinochet was no longer able to stay in uh, England. And this uh, story of uh, Belarus in Europe is really such love. It is very pleasant to pretend that the Belarus is not a European state. Only God knows where it is located. When people ask you where are you from, from Belarus, Belarus, where is it? And uh, it has really become an interesting part of Europe. Um, in the past, when uh, one of the major decisions was being taken uh, concerning economic sanctions against Lukashenko, all of a sudden it was Slovenia that blocked a comprehensive solution to this issue. And we asked why? Why did you block the decision? Uh, well, the answer was because we are building a hotel complex there and we already invested 150 million there. Uh, still 150 million dollars. Um, uh, one uh, person said, uh, I could uh, promote, uh, push my business, and I could uh, purchase Slovenia. This is a very strange situation because it is uh, very easy to teach Ghana or uh, Burma how to live. But uh, when uh, next to your door you have a situation where one person has been doing uh, anything he wants for 20 years, we have uh, two daughters, uh, one is 15, one is 20, and they never had an opportunity to take part in free elections. They have never seen anything else. They only know that during their entire life uh, the person in power is Lukashenko. This is uh, unreal. And uh, for example, uh, there are even things that we cannot discuss at home because uh, there are always questions, why is it so? Uh, Belarus is uh, a shame on the face of Europe. Uh, this dictatorship could be removed in one month by Europe, or at maximum in two months. The dictatorship in uh, Belarus could be removed, uh, and uh, uh, thus uh, there would be no dictatorship in Europe. But uh, simply this decision didn't go through because there was this business deal to be completed, and therefore they negotiated with Lukashenko and blocked the decision. Then it was jo joined by Ukraine. Uh, than uh, Russia, and uh, what resulted was a triumvirate of uh, three fools uh, inhabited of uh, 200 million uh, people, and it was really a shameful thing to do. And now we can only think about the consequences of uh, that uh, ignorance. Uh, 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 during the entire 20 years, uh, Russia uh, uh, only further developed uh, uh, Lukashenko's uh, methods. Uh, one, when Lukashenko introduced something, it was introduced two years later by Russia. Uh, equally, 
like in uh, the former Soviet Union, um, it was uh, a practice to chase out all the dissidents from the country. And uh, there is uh, yet uh, one more topic uh, that we are going to deal with. Uh, it's a relationship between um, uh, Russia and Ukraine. We have a number of uh, um, data or information about this situation uh, from uh, our friends or those who are actually engaged in fights. And this is really a very bad situation because uh, many things are being uh, hidden. Uh, we cannot only speak about the downing of an aircraft. Uh, there are also thousands of victims, and the situation as it is today can grow at any time to unprecedented dimensions. In the meantime, Putin built three military bases in Belarus. There used to be no such military base before. Why is it? Is he doing it? And uh, he is doing it in uh, the recent period. What does it mean? Is a new front going to be opened against Ukraine, this time from the north? This would again be a terrible situation where soldiers would get killed, but this time including European soldiers. This is really a black uh, uh, view of the situation, but thank you for your support. I would like to ask you a question concerning your work in Belarus. How do you organize uh, your performances? How does it work? How is it possible to get information about the performance? And how is it possible to disseminate information about uh, such performances? Usually, to we use social networks to publish some information, but we uh, gave a very short description of the name of the play, the phone number of our manager, and when you dial this number, you leave your name and you are called back, you are told where to meet. You are asked to bring your ID for the case you would be apprehended. You will come to the, you arrive to the place agreed. You will be taken to the place where the play is performed. We cannot use the common advertising media, so we use these confidential channels so that we are able to play. It's uh, very difficult, it's very complicated because as it happened that even though our managers agree a location, the location is then visited by KGB and tell the people there that if they allow the free theater to perform, they will be taken license away. And it has also happened recently. We have seen such a raid when we played Ch Chaika, the seagull by Ch uh, Chekhov, and uh, police officers came and said that it is not possible to play anti-government plays and that they will not help to organize the second Maidan. I think that Chekhov would be really proud of hearing this, that his peace uh, seagull could result in a change of the social order. So it is indeed a very complicated history with our game, but we had a great teacher and a friend, Václav Havel, we are proud of it. We know of stories when Pavel Landowski and Kromosova played uh, Macbeth in flats in Prague or 
when when they have to perform as a side event of a wedding. We had such a wedding already. The bride and the bridegroom met each other half an hour before the, uh, before the wedding. So we had this event and we played in, uh, in a forest. It all looked like a wedding. Even the police came, but they didn't understand anything. They saw the bride, the bridegroom, and vodka, and everything which belongs to a wedding. So they have come and asked, so they came and asked, what does it mean? And so the answer was, you know, our guests are poor actors, and they had no money to give us a real gift, so they perform. And we have a lot of performances like this in restaurants we rented, in cafes. And 10 times we played a piece in a bistro. It is uh, covered by a cloth just opposite the KGB building and the militia would, the police would come check what's happening and we played, we acted our pieces but they didn't understand that what we do, they didn't understand that opposite the building we do this. But the school of old dissidents can be translated into new age and then you learn a new technology of fight. It is without an end, it's endless. It will happen all the time if somebody wants to stop people, to stop people speaking. Now we have this new piece called The Time of Women, and we will play it only in flats. We are not going to rent anything. Flats will be the stage. In other countries you have a normal stage, but in Belarus it's not more than 20 people in the audience and not more. But 20 people is something we are able to organize and we can make a online transmission so several thousands of people are able to see it. I think that the government, not us, will have a hard life. Uh, are there any more questions? We are sorry, but there is no sound in a microphone. We play in Belarus and in Russian and in English, even in Swedish. We use different possibilities. We had one piece where we used five, six languages. And our previous piece, called Price of Money, was performed in English, Russian, and Belarus. King Lear in Belarus. The following uh, piece will be in Russian and Belarus. And we had other pieces that were only in English. We have a very complex structure. We have actors from Great Britain, Italy, Canada, Belarus, Australia, and US, the Netherlands. We have a very large company and we use more often English as a means of communication in our team and some pieces like the future one will be in Russian and Belarus but in general the situation is becoming a multilingual situation можно видеть спектакль на интернете? В интернете? 
Is it possible to watch uh, your play on the internet? Yes, when we have uh, a live stream, uh, it is possible, but uh, only on certain days. Uh, when we play abroad, then uh, we announce on our site uh, uh, the play. We have a very simple location. Uh, it's. Uh, the address is very simple, and uh, you can watch it. Uh, we most often play in London, to, and uh, together with our actors, we plan to broadcast a large number of plays uh, in November next year. It will be the 10th anniversary of our theater. Moreover, in, in uh, 2015, we'll have presidential elections and we'll play a lot in order to support our spectators inside Belarus. And uh, what's interesting is that it will be the time when uh, parliamentary elections will be held in the United Kingdom. It's our second home. Uh, and uh, these elections will be connected with uh, many public discussions. We believe that it is necessary to explain our British uh, audience uh, audiences uh, that uh, we have to cherish, we have to really appreciate uh, the freedom of choice. And uh, we will uh, explain that we all have to fight in order to change the situation in our own country rather than waiting for anybody else to do it. Um, in uh, many countries, there is a trend that uh, everything is financed by large corporations and that uh, irrespective of elections, nothing changes. But uh, we are of the opinion that uh, uh, it is at least possible to change the face of our country because uh, we are dealing with the same face uh, for 20 years. And a new phase uh, could also give uh, the opportunity for a systemic change. We are trying to explain this to our young viewers in uh, the United Kingdom. Grasp the opportunity while you have it. So our plays are going to be uh, produced uh, both in the United Kingdom and also elsewhere in the world. Um, whatever. Uh, we live uh, in a market situation, uh, in an international context. Our plays are produced uh, and played, and not all of them can be uh, played on the internet, or uh, this would be against uh, the rules, or the festivals would be against uh, it. But uh, all the plays will be uh, taped, um, uh, recorded and uh, uh, they will be thus uh, stored for the future. We would like to make this heritage accessible uh, to make it present in the information field. As regards the freedom of choice mentioned by Natasha, in uh, some countries, where a new face uh, appeared, like that of Putin, uh, they uh, begin to understand that uh, this infection penetrated also into the European Union, like, for example, Orban, Comrade Orban, you were able to, you yourself here were able to take this decisive step and to do away with Mechiar, but if you continued to have a Mechiar up to these days, if you go to the office and you have a Mechiar's picture hanging on the wall, uh, and you would remember nothing else but Mechiar, maybe there had been something different before, but uh, 
from what you remember, it's always been Mechiar. He'll be here forever. And when he dies, uh, he will be replaced by, by his son. This is our situation. Uh, Lukashenko's son uh, is 11 years old, and already now he is a copy of his uh, father. For example, when uh, they meet uh, with uh, the Pope in Rome, the young uh, son of Lukashenko uh, gives a gift of a grammar book uh, to, or a reader book to the Pope. Uh, Lukashenko being the head of our uh, Belarusian uh, uh, gang is uh, using also a funny language, the same as Putin, and the funnier is the language they've been using, the closer is their farewell or is our farewell to them. At least we hope so. It looks like uh, that this could be the last question, or there is still time for the last question. So if there is no last question, I may say that there is a very interesting document about the Belarus Free Theater called uh, Dangerous Acts. You could see, you could watch it if you got interested in the work of this theater company and the way of life which is so demanding, so difficult, respectful. And uh, you, this advertisement could be the end of a very nice evening. May I thank you for the peace, for the performance, the discussion, and I wish you a lot of power, strength for future, future production. <laughs> Don't think that I want to uh, sound too sweet, but we admire Slovakia. We have two reasons. One is the people, because even before we came here, we've come here the first time, even before that, we got to like your ambassador, incredible person, good sense of humor. We never spoke about politics because everything was clear, even without words. We were only telling jokes, and that were the people through which we learned Slovakia. The second reason for our love with Slovakia is the cuisine. You have excellent cuisine, believe me. Thank you very much. And we will be happy, and we are always happy to come here. Thank you.